All right, so here we are, aft cabin. Man, baby. Good then. <laughs> you really did good with the varnish action. Good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, baby took care of all the varnish back here today on all the teak panels that we installed. And we have the headliner stapled back into place. Yeah, so it's getting there. It's coming along. Yep, yep. Yeah, you think so? Mm-hmm. Looks nice, huh? Oh, Starting. yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Yep. They'll never be able to say we were kung fu fighting, that's for sure. <laughs> we were working. Welcome back to another exciting and thrill-filled adventure with DIY Nautical Dream. Okay, maybe that was a little over the top. Anyways, we'll go ahead and get our next video started. Here we go. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Alright, so continuing to our DIY project, we are now closing up F cabin vinyl and then continuing doing repairs and we're repairing legs in the overhead galley right yep still then, working on that mm -hmm. also today we're going to be putting baby hard to work in the aft cabin captain's quarters needs a little bit of polishing up back there so we're going to put you back to work in the aft cabin what do you think about that I'm excited. Let's get on it. Oh yeah, I'm excited for you to get on it as well. So in the aft cabin, of course. So we'll get started on that and see how far we get today. All right. So what else? <laughs> Struggling like normal, pretty much. So let's get to work. All right. We'll check back in later. See ya. Okay. These are the long pieces of trim from the aft cabin. So we took these home and we wanted to strip them down to prepare them to refinish. We want to put the new matching varnish on that we're using on the rest of the panels so everything kind of has the same tone and color to it. But yeah, so we stripped these down, we sanded them with light sandpaper, and we just want to remove the very top surface of varnish so that we don't have any discoloration or any, any old varnish left on the wood or in the pores. And then what we do is we clean it and we wipe it down with acetone and a dry tack cloth to make sure we don't have any dust left on it so when we go to prepare to put the new varnish nothing's going to show. One of the important steps about varnishing is the pre-work before the preparation. Cleaning and wiping down to make sure there's no dust on it, that's one of the key elements to making sure that you're going to come out with a nice clean, clear finish with no imperfections in it. So after the preparation we went ahead and applied our first coat of the varnish on there and you can see right away that it's made a really huge difference in the tone and the color and the look of the teak here. And it looks really nice. It's a lot. It, it looks dark right now, but it will lighten up. And eventually, with a couple layers and sanding in, in between each coat, this is going to look really nice. And it will eventually match the teak paneling that we have in the aft cabin. So everything's going to look good. It's going to look like it's been varnished all at the same time. So there's no mismatch in the tones. 
Baby said she wanted to hang out with me in the aft cabin and try something new. She said she was feeling adventurous. She said, put me to work. Give me something to do. I'm like, uh, okay. If you can help me pull the staples out of the vinyl, that'd be a big help. I think I guessed right this time. I'm not good at reading minds. Hmm. I told him I want to do something at the aft cabin. Obviously, he did not get it. All right, so today we're going to be uh, pulling all the staples out. Baby's working on this side over here. She's going to be pulling all the staples out on the overhead vinyl. And that's in preparation to start uh, stapling it back down with new staples and uh, any repairs we need to do along the way to the vinyl. But it looks like it's going to be fine. And then it gets covered over with some uh, teak trim, so we won't see any of the seams or anything like that. And then... Uh, once everything's all in place, we will mask off where the seams are and then revarnish all the new teak that's been put in here, all the teak panels. We'll revarnish that and put all the trim back up and varnish that, put new plugs in on the trim and varnish those as well. So hopefully we won't see any of the screw holes. So anyways, that's what's going on right now. It's looking good, coming along slowly but surely. So here you can see uh, I've already finished stapling up the vinyl on this side and all that's going to get covered over with some teak trim so you won't even, won't even be able to see where the staple line is at and then uh, over here is what I still have left to do all the way over to there but yeah it's going to look really nice I think uh, we were debating on whether we were going to be able to save this this vinyl or not back here in the aft cabin, but I think we're gonna be all right with it. It's gonna look okay. And uh, if we gotta replace it, if we need to replace it later, we have the technology, we can do it. But I think we're gonna be able to save what we have. So stapling this vinyl up, this uh, vinyl headliner back into place is not an easy thing to do. You gotta apply a lot of steady pressure when you're squeezing the trigger on the staple gun and make sure the head of the gun is held down nice and flat against the material and it'll drive a nice clean flat staple but if you're off and you're not doing it right and you're not holding down steady pressure it'll drive that thing in all kinds of crazy directions so you got to be really really careful of that and make sure you have a high hard even pressure the whole time so we got the left corner done and we just continue working our way across the back section here and then eventually we'll work our way around to the right side corner and start setting that in nicely and if we keep nice, even pressure on the vinyl and we do everything right, hopefully this will look like somebody professional did it and not like a couple of rookies doing it. But we're learning as we go, and that's what's important because we want to pick up these skills so that later on down the road, should we decide we want to upgrade the vinyl or do something newer or better with it, we can change it out and we don't have that fear of trying to figure out how to do it then. Okay, well, after what seemed like several hours of looking up with my head leaning into the corner of this aft cabin, one way or the other, my neck was going to be sore and focus, focus, focus. It's all I could do to try and get these staples in and keep steadily working around the corner. And eventually we started to make some progress and it felt like we were on the home stretch. So that's a little motivating knowing that we still had several hundred more staples to put in, it felt like. But eventually it started looking like it was coming together pretty good. I made one slight mistake in the le uh, left corner here in the aft cabin. And might have to go back and fix that. I don't know, but I really don't feel like messing with it. So we might just leave it. But if you don't know it's there, you won't really see it. But uh, yeah, working with vinyl, this is our first time doing it. So we're learning as we go. Um, but yeah, it's fun, but it's kind of frustrating and tedious all at the same time. It's not for everybody. I don't know if it's something I'd want to be doing on, on an everyday basis. But stretching this old crusty vinyl back into place takes a lot of strength and a lot of uh, patience to work with it. All right, so here we are, aft cabin. Man, baby. Good. You really did good with the varnish action. Good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, baby took care of all the varnish back here today on all the teak panels that we installed. 
and we have the headliner stapled back into place. Yeah, so it's getting there. It's coming along. Yep, yep. Yeah, you think so? Mm-hmm. Looks nice, huh? Oh, Starting. yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Yep. They'll never be able to say we were kung fu fighting, that's for sure. <laughs> we were working. But, yeah, it's it's coming along good. Coming along good. So then uh, went ahead and removed the ceiling panel here in the back part of the bed. And um, we're going to take that home and use that as a template and then we'll do the other side over here next but I don't know what's going on with this plywood back here but I think I think we'll be able to do something a little bit better than that kind of uh, stacking them on top of each other like that yeah I don't know what's going on there now cabin we got the teak, the new teak panels up we have the uh, old ceiling vinyl Stapled back down into place. And baby went ahead and put on another coat of varnish over the wood on the teak panels. And uh, yeah, it's really, man, it's starting to look good now. Very nice. So what's left to do is start putting all the, all these trim pieces back on. And uh, those will go on next time. And then next project coming up is the overhead underneath the, uh, well, the overhead in the back half part of the bed here. But you can see, you can see the plywood they put up there is, is all wet, warped, and totally delaminating. I'm not sure what they were thinking, what their idea was, but... Those three pieces stacked on top of each other. Mm. I think I can do better than that. I really do. Um, but we'll see. Maybe I don't know what I'm up against. Maybe they had some kind of a reason for stacking those pieces on top of each other. But I don't. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know what they were thinking. But we're gonna go ahead and try and do better. And so I went ahead and removed the piece over here, the uh, ceiling panel here, and um, we're gonna take that home. And I'm going to use that as a template to make a piece out of teak, teak plywood, and put that in there instead of this, um, this white, this white plastic stuff. I really don't like that. And, uh, I think we can come up with something better than that. So anyways, all in all, we've had a pretty good successful day and, uh, man, I'm really happy with the progress. Really happy with it. I mean, I wish we'd be able to, you know, get it done faster, but. We don't have a lot of time, so we make use of one day, one day a week. So we're getting there, making some progress. So if you take a look now, this is the aft cabin with the new teak panels on and a couple coats of varnish on there. And the vinyl is now stapled back into place. Wow, what a difference it's looking like. I mean, it looks so nice back there. Worlds apart different compared to how it was when we first bought the boat. Sure, it's not perfect. But it looks a lot better and we're feeling a lot better where our confidence levels are getting higher on the type of work we're feeling comfortable doing. We've never done anything like this before so this is a first for us and we're really feeling motivated by stepping back and seeing some of the work we've completed so far. It's looking good. We still got a long ways to go. There's no doubt about that. Now we'll get ready to start adding those pieces of teak trim on there. One of the things that's bothered us since the time we looked at this boat the first time is in the aft cabin right above where you lay down on the bed. The headliner above there is this white vinyl plastic that was hanging down. Really poorly put in there, poorly trimmed. The gaps and everything was just horrible on it. We can't believe this came from the factory this way. There's nobody would have bought a boat this size, this expensive with that kind of plastic put back there. So it leads us to think that there were some leaks back here at one time that caused the original headliner to rot or decay or get wet. And they replaced it with this and they never did a good job doing it. It's just a band-aid fix. So we're going to take these down and we're going to see if we can do something better with it. But yeah, we got to do something here. Did we mention we really like these new teak panels in the aft cabin? The ones that we just installed, the ones Baby put the new varnish on? 
Man, those are turning out looking good. Thing of beauty in work right there, people. So we, before we pull these white vinyl panels down, we're going to put the blue tape around there and we're going to mark approximately what the gap dimensions are on there every couple inches or even less. And depending on how wide or how narrow the gaps are, we do that so that when we pull these down, we kind of know how much edge margin to add on to the new panel and we'll make it larger than it needs to be to fit in there. But so that's kind of what we're going to go do. And we're going to do this in a series of steps all the way around all these panels. And then so when we pull them down, we'll know how much edge, edge margin to add on there. You'll see it works out. So if you look here, some of these gaps are pretty good sized. And you're going to see these when you're laying down on bed looking straight up. You'll be looking at these panels just kind of hanging out, looking up at them, looking at these gaps. For me, that would seriously annoy me. We don't want that. We don't want that on our boat anywhere. So we got to continue to put the tape on here and mark these gaps. And we'll add a little extra on there throughout. And eventually when we cut our templates to fit in here, we'll have to do a lot of hand sanding. But we're, we're going to look for a gap-free fit. This is unacceptable. Here you can see where the two panels join together. And there's no trim or nothing over the top. You just get that overlapping look to it. And... Then you look at the aft bulkhead there and you see the gap. That's like a quarter inch or even bigger in some spots and it's just sitting there. That's it. That's the best they could do. I would not find that acceptable. I don't know who put that on there and thought it was looking good. Getting this panel to fit is going to be tricky. So I'm going to add lots of extra edge margin on here and try and maintain the shape the best we can. And we're just going to have to do a lot of hand sanding to get this to fit. It's tricky because it's got curve and angles and all kinds of complex corners and stuff going on here. And, and uh, yeah, it's going to be tough. I don't know how we're going to make this one fit, but it's going to take all kinds of patience and really slow hand sanding and just making it little adjustments here and there and getting it to fit in there. Hopefully we can make it work out, but it's got to be better than what this is. But, yeah, it's, it's coming along good. Coming along good. So then uh, went ahead and removed the ceiling panel here in the back part of the bed. And... Um, we're going to take that home and use that as a template, and then we'll do the other side over here next. But I don't know what's going on with this plywood back here, but I think I think we'll be able to do something a little bit better than that, kind of uh, stacking them on top of each other like that. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Anyways, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so we brought the white vinyl panels home. We have the blue tape on there indicating how much edge margin we need to add on there. And so we'll add just a little bit more than that on there. Also, while we do that, we're going to maintain the shape of that white panel because that'll get us close. And then we'll just start hand fitting it once we get it back to the boat. So here's what it looks like cut out onto some door skin. And the reason why we use door skin is because it's really light, it's cheap, and it's very thin, and it's flexible. So it works really good for doing uh, fit-up templates and things like that. And then once we get to the final design, it's all trimmed and hand-fitted and goes in there really good. We'll cut it out of this teak plywood here, and then we'll start fitting that in there. We'll do a little bit of final hand sanding and the final fit with that teak plywood. Now we're going to transition back to working in the galley overhead. we got a lot of grinding, a lot of fiberglass cutting and we got a lot of blending we got to do in here to get this ready to start putting that thickened epoxy and fiberglass cloth in there we want to just keep making steady slow progress in this area we work on it a little bit while we're letting other things dry or cure or whatever and then we move back on other jobs while we're waiting for the epoxy to set up on this but we keep keep moving forward a little bit at a time always making some progress
after what seemed like hours and hours of grinding with the multi-tool and the Dremel and switching back and forth, trying to clean these surfaces up to prepare them for fiberglass and to round over the surfaces, things like that, when just trying to get rid of all the sharp corners, sharp edges. Fiberglass does not like to conform around sharp angles, things like that. So we tried to smooth it out a little bit and just chew away any of the old loose material that we could. So after all the grinding and we were pleased with the outcome and ready for the uh, cleaning of the surface, we wipe it down with acetone, make sure we don't have any dust or anything in there, and then we start layering up our new fiberglass over and have it overlapping the areas where we did earlier fiberglassing up above. And I, I know this is not pretty looking, but this is going to work. And as far as repairs goes, this looks pretty good. So we also added some thickened epoxy in there with it as well, underneath some of the fiberglass tape, just to kind of help uh, smooth out some of the radius, the sharp radiuses, things like that. And it'll also help prevent it from leaking as well. So we got a good packing of thickened epoxy in there and then a couple layers of really light fiberglass uh, cloth as well. So we're not looking for a huge structural repair. We're just really looking to stop the leaks in this area. And that was it. So looks like it's going to do the job and we're happy with it. So while we're letting the epoxy and uh, fiberglass kick off, we'll go ahead and get started on the back section that we are grinding on and trimming away all the loose rotted material that was back there as well. Uh, keep in mind that none of this is cored fiberglass. There's no coring in this section. This is all just fiberglass and gel coat. There's no coring for the water or any kind of moisture to pool up or puddle into. So we don't have to worry about trying to like hunt down sources and pockets of water. We're just, all we're really trying to do is just clear out the loose material and give it a new surface for the fiberglass and the epoxy to bond onto and we'll fix these leaks. So you can clearly see daylight showing through this area right here. And this is a source of where water was coming in. And this is really just due to poor manufacturing. They really could have filled these voids in and these cracks and crevices. They could have filled these in better with thickened epoxy and maybe put some cloth over it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. But they should have been able to do that at the factory. It really looks like it was just poor planning on their part. And it wasn't a good follow through on the design. It worked for a while, but eventually it failed and... What was outside was really the only thing holding it from leaking was the gel coat and boats flex and all that stuff. And the gel coat with no fiberglass behind it, it eventually just broke away and the water started coming in. And on the exterior side, it is actually inside the cockpit area of the boat. And that's where the moisture was coming in from. Okay, so we packed this area pretty full with all the, all the thickened epoxy we mixed up. We filled it in there. And we put it in all the joints and cracks and crevices. And it's filled in really good. And then we put a couple layers of uh, light fiberglass cloth over the outside of that. And walked away to let it cure. Come back a little bit later and it's already set up. Starting to set up. And uh, it looks like the fiberglass cloth kind of lifted away in a few spots. But all in all the uh, thickened epoxy stayed where it was supposed to. And most parts of the uh, thickened epoxy are covered with fiberglass. And I think this is going to be just fine. We're going to also do the repair on the outside as well. So moisture is not getting in there. It'll be good. Luckily, nobody's going to see this repair. So I wanted to go into a little bit of detail and explain the area that we're actually repairing here. That little part right there, that tube, long tube shaped area, that's for the lines leading back from the mast, the main mast, into the cockpit area. That's all that is. And so somehow they, they fiberglass that in place in the cockpit area and also the slider for the companionway is in that area as well. So on the cockpit side, you can see cracks in the gel coat and so on. And those cracks are actually what is causing the leaks on the inside. And if you can see the hole there where the daylight is, that's a piece of gel coat that had fallen out. And it wasn't supported by anything on the backside like epoxy or any kind of fiberglass or anything. So over time, it just kind of loosened up and fell out. And that's how you can see the daylight. So any time that it rains, and because the boat is sitting on the hard and it's not exactly level, the water collects on that side, and it tends to run aft and puddle just on the inside of the cockpit area, right forward of the winch. So that water over time wants to fall into that hole and go down onto the inside of the cabin and sit on the plywood and cause it to rot. And year after year, the boat's been sitting there for about six or eight years, 
that's a lot of weathering, a lot of water just puddling on the inside there. So I'm trying to explain the area and explain why it's rotted there. But there's no core in that area. There's no honeycomb core inside the composite or inside the fiberglass or anything like that. So there's nowhere for the water to trap. It's just solid fiberglass with gel coat over it in that particular area. In this picture here, we're doing a test fit of our new piece of plywood that we're going to be putting in there. And we have to put it in in sections so it'll all fit in there nicely into those slots of tabbing that we left. And once that's in there, it looks like it's going to be a good fit. And then we'll eventually put that in with lots of thickened epoxy on the edges and in the seams where it sits in that slot. And then we'll, while that is curing, we will go over the outside of the plywood with fiberglass tape. And we'll tab it into the old tabs, old fiberglass tabs as well. And uh, hopefully that will turn out to be a nice solid repair. And if that goes well, then we'll continue to do our work aft until we have it all replaced with new uh, epoxy coated plywood so it won't soak up any water. Hi guys, so we are on our first week. <laughs> and first week? Man, we're past first week. We're just gonna hang out and stuff? Yeah, but we're past first week. I know, I'm too caring. I'm okay. like, lost count. We're, yeah, we're, we're into it more than a couple weeks now. We're, we're in our 15 weeks. Yeah. But 15 weeks takes us like <laughs> five months. So, um, anyways. <laughs> yeah, we're into this. Anyways, we've been, we've been working on it. We're into... Yeah, so we've been working on this for a while. And uh, we only come up on the weekends, usually on Saturdays only. So we only get one, one eight-hour period of working on this. So uh, we've made a lot of progress, though. So. But the boat is still on the hard. We're not, we don't plan on putting it in the water anytime soon. So we're hoping maybe uh, there's a small, few small repairs on the outside of the hull, like the... Uh, the rudder has some mounting bolts that I want to replace and inspect. Um, yeah, it was crazy. You know, we did a we we searched everywhere. We went as far as Trinidad. We went looking for boats. We went to uh, all up and down Florida, East Coast, all the way down to Florida Keys and um, Philippines. Oh, sorry. No, we didn't go to <laughs> Philippines, but you know, we thought about it. There were some boats there we were looking at, and uh, so we went looked at uh, several boats in Florida. The one in Trinidad that was a uh, CT-54, that was, that was, uh, my heart was in that one for sure, and... Not me. No, not her so much, but I was talking with the owner and everything. We talked for several months before we went and looked at it, and, and it was nothing like it was advertised. And, you know, we found that to be a lot of the cases on a lot of the boats we looked at. They were not as advertised, not anything close. And so if you're, if you're shopping for a boat, just yeah keep that in mind <laughs> nothing looks like it does in the pictures or the, the brochure or anything like that you you got to figure it's been sitting for a long time uh there's moisture there's uh you know if it's got a teak deck there's going to be some issues with that the uh headliner inside all kinds of sorts of thing, things that can be uh changed a lot from the, the first time those pictures were taken so uh so yeah we looked all over uh florida we looked at several boats in florida um, once the CT-54 didn't work out, then we were on to the, the Formosa 51s. And, uh, yeah, we went to, we stopped at the Bahamas along the way. And, um, so we were looking for a Formosa 51 after that. And then we looked at a, uh, a Pearson 53 in Florida. Really wanted that, but we kind of waited on making an offer. And by the time we decided we wanted to put an offer on that one, it, sold. it had sold, and then we found out later that it had major damage, probably about $100,000 worth of uh, keel damage and all kinds of other repairs that needed to be done. So that was that was probably a blessing that one didn't work out. And the one in Trinidad, it was a blessing that one didn't work out either because by the time we got back home, the lockdown, lockdown. the lockdown went into full effect, and we, we still would not have been able to go back and look at that boat. So we would have bought a boat we couldn't even look at, uh, not even touch it again. So would have been not fun so after florida we left and went to uh went to ohio and we looked at a uh, formosa 51 in, in ohio that had been sitting indoors for a really long time and uh, it was a nice boat but it had a lot of water damage inside and and uh the owner that had owned that one had passed away uh part way through the restoration project so um they were asking more and we wanted to pay for it 
I didn't really want to go into the back and forth negotiations on it because uh, I we found out that it was going to be about twenty to twenty five thousand just to ship it Here. ship it back to Washington State. So we get we kind of moved on from that one. Uh, then we flew from there to Bremerton. no, we flew from there to uh, San Diego, California, <laughs> and we looked at uh, we we're going to look at uh, two boats in San Diego, but one had sold, and then so we went and looked at the Formosa 51 there, and it was an older one, it was a 74 or 75, and it's in pretty good shape, but it had wooden masts on it, and I found some cracks, uh, they could have been just cosmetic, but there were some cracks in the mast, and the interior on that one was beautiful, and it was a really nice boat, pretty good shape for its age, but they were uh, pretty proud of it price-wise, and uh, you know, as soon as they thought we were interested in it, they didn't want to move on the price, but so we kind of just kind of left that one on the back burner for a while and kind of decided to move on. Uh, we looked at a uh, Formosa in um, Port Angeles, Washington. It was a really nice one. And then uh, we were in negotiation with the owner and then uh, somebody else was interested in it from Florida. And it turned out it was uh, sailing Miss Lone Star. And uh, she ended up buying it before we could finish negotiations on the price. and. Uh, it was a nice boat, but he wanted a lot of money for it, a lot more than we wanted to spend, uh, considering the mast uh, and the rigging, and there was no sails for it. There was a lot of things missing, but the boat was in pretty good shape, but it wasn't it wasn't exactly what we were looking for project-wise. And then uh, we found this boat in Everett. We kind of looked at it a couple of times, and that was the, uh, the one we actually ended up buying. But before we bought this one, we flew all the way back to uh, Michigan, and we looked at a... Uh, Formosa 51 there and it was really nice uh, the owners had restored it quite a bit and um, I think we were in the right price range but then uh, bringing, it here. bringing it here was another $25,000 and, and we just didn't really want to spend $25,000 to move our toy all the way across country just so we could start working on it so uh, we just kind of decided not to go for that one and then we came back to this the one we ended up buying now we went into negotiations and uh, we gave our best offer, and they didn't like it, so we moved up to what they were, their low offer was, and we set up an appointment for the survey. And um, survey day came, and uh, it was crazy. Everything fell apart, right? Surveyor was mad, throwing his arms up in the air. Before we even got here, he had already looked at the boat for about 15 minutes and decided this boat wasn't worth his time. And he said it was a piece of junk, and you'd be better off just gutting it and starting completely over. And, uh, which is kind of where we're at now. No, just kidding. But, yeah, so, uh, so our heart was kind of broken. We really liked this boat. We liked the layout on it. And we just didn't want to pay the full price, but we were prepared to do so. And then the survey, the whole thing fell apart then. The survey walks off mad, throwing his arms up in the air, won't even look at it. Wasn't going to take our money. He just wanted to walk away and said all kinds of things were wrong with it the rigging was going to fall apart wouldn't wouldn't be able to tension the rig wouldn't be able to sail it wouldn't you know all kinds of all these just crazy nightmarish scenarios and we're just like wow and so he showed me up front one area that was really badly rotten well it was the uh it was the divider for the uh the chain locker for the anchors the divider had rotted and uh he said that was what was supporting the forward chain plate for the uh, stay sail and I never even looked in there before because I didn't you know I didn't I guess inexperience on on my part I didn't even think to look in there and we we're like wow that's terrible you know and so we all walked away and got back down into the parking lot and uh talked about it and the anyways the surveyor left he was mad and the broker says well do you want to re reprice your quote like do I want to lower do we want to lower our bid on it and uh I said, I don't know right now, we just need to think about it. I said, why don't you get a hold of the surveyor, get get him to list those things he was saying were completely rotten on the boat, and we'll we'll talk about it after we see what those items are on paper. And, and so a few weeks go by, and we ended up revising our, our bid lower. And um, long story short, they took our offer, and so we ended up buying the boat. And so we're on it now, and we've been working on it. Oh, several weeks you know every weekend we come up here and work on it and uh 
fixing little things here and there. And so we have a lot of pictures and, you know, documentation of what we've been doing to it. And uh, turns out we're, you know, replacing a lot of the headliner supports um, on the interior. There was a lot of leaks inside that were, you know, all over up in the, in the ceiling area. And uh, so we've just been working on that over the last several months. And, um, you know, I think it's a good project for us. You you feel pretty good about it, right? Yeah, so, and it's a nice boat. Yeah, and it's a nice boat. It's it's Beautiful. Uh, it's very nice. It has really good potential. It has very good structure in it. And, uh, you know, we're going to make the most of it. And we're not in a rush. But uh, we feel like this is our dream boat. And, and uh, so that's where we're at. And, um, you know, we'll keep updating as we go. But crazy story. <laughs> And, well, right now, yeah, we're gonna have our snack. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna eat now, so we'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye. All right, so as you can see, I was doing or taking out the old staple. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit hard, it struggled because it was so rusty. And we tried to do it gentle because we want to put it back nice. Yeah, we want to keep the vinyl intact and be able to reuse it and reclose that area. and Essentially, we want to make it look like we were never there. We want to make it look as good as it was um, before we took it apart, if not better. So that's the goal. Pulling those staples out and putting the new ones in is hard work. It looks easy, but it's it's not. It's no fun at all. So it takes a long time. All right. And then we repaired the leaks in yeah. the over, overhead galley. Yeah, we keep finding more and more leaks in that overhead galley area. So now that explains why there's all that rotted plywood in that section. And so... Yeah, we added thickened epoxy and some fiberglass to close up some of those leaks. So um, we found a few more and we're patching them as we go. And uh, I think we're confident that with the skills we're learning along the way that we're going to be able to close up this galley overhead project eventually. It's not going to go fast, but we're making slow and steady progress on it. So it's good. Yeah, so um, we're making a good progress and then the cabin starting to look a thing of beauty oh yeah that half cabin's really starting to pop it's starting to look like a thing of beauty for sure so we're really happy with the progress we made back there a little sketchy getting into it in the beginning but now we're starting to realize we're making some skills and progress along the way that's gonna we're gonna be able to use those skills throughout the boat on other projects upcoming so it's great to be learning back there and take what we've learned and we're gonna be able to use it throughout the boat in the future so it's really good and that it's starting to really look beautiful back there so we're happy with that. All right. So thanks for watching, guys, this week's video. If you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Comment Down below. below. Bing. Don't forget to like. Yeah, don't forget to like. And we really appreciate it when you uh, like and subscribe and comment on our videos. It gives us a little feeling that you're appreciating what you see. And we're trying to get better each and every time we do a video. So please bear with us. We will get better over time. We're still learning how to do all this video and editing and capturing the content in a format and in the way that people want to see how we're doing what we're doing. So it's a little bit harder than we thought it was, but we're trying. We're trying and, and we'll get better over time. It's just it's just all a lot of adjustment that we have to make. So thanks for sticking with us. We really appreciate it. All right. Stay tuned. See ya. See you. Have a nice day. Bye. Okay. Now there's a nice looking shell. I'd keep that one. And what's that? My idea. Oh, we got a boat coming. It's this guy. Nice. Dang. Five engines on the back. That was sweet.